Are you a member of Bachelor Nation? Well, you found the right podcast. Welcome to Playing the Field, a Bachelor podcast. I'm Ryan Field, a sports anchor here at Channel 7, Eyewitness News in New York City, and a lifelong Bachelor fan. Proud to say it, we are excited to talk about Joey's journey to find love alongside me throughout this podcast journey are our ABC correspondents, the Bachelor experts, if you will, Jen Matteris and Gina Sirico, who's out there in Los Angeles. And what a way to kick things off than with the man himself, Joey Grazaday, the Bachelor here to talk about season 28. Joey, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Excited yeah. and honored to be the first guest. This is fun. We are so happy to have you here. And I guess the first question that comes to mind is, having been through this experience before on The Bachelorette and having taped this entire journey to find love, how different is it now watching it back as opposed to experiencing it for the first time? And was it so different watching it back when you were on The Bachelorette the first yeah, time? Yeah, definitely different than The Bachelorette. Uh, I will say it's a lot more Joey on The Bachelor. So there's a lot <laughs> more screen time. There's a lot more opportunities for me to mess up, as people would say. But uh, it's been fun. I think this is just, it feels more like, again, what I remembered because I was a part of so much this time. And to be able to watch it back, see how it looks on the outside, to see America's reaction. It's fun. I'm trying to do my best to express how I feel and, and show who I am. It's just, it's hard to do that while also trying to be fun and be more light. And sometimes it's just not me. I'm not, I'm not this like super energetic, here we go, Joey. Like that's not who I am. I just feel like sometimes people expect you to be a certain way. And it's just like, is it really me? I don't know. We started with 32 women, mm -hmm. we're down to six, mm -hmm. and so many emotions have come to the surface here in episode six of season 28, as crazy as that is to say. You're at the beginning kind of questioning this whole journey, if someone's going to love your, it love you back, are you emotionally ready to take on all of this? And when the women are on location there in Montreal, all those emotions are kind of getting to the surface now because everything is getting a lot more serious and people aren't happy to see you. Uh, going on dates with other women. What was that emotional journey like to that point? And, and why did all of that kind of bubble to the surface at that point in the season? Yeah, week six was heavy. You can call it as it was. Uh, and I think it was the right time of it. I think as you saw what I said, it was when I started to feel real emotions, realizing that there's something that's building here with some of these women. You definitely on my side felt that the emotions were getting more serious and real for the women on their side. Um, it's, it's a lot to take in and you start to question if you're the right guy for this. If is this something that you can actually handle with all these women really starting to open up and share what they want because you know if it works out, it's just going to be with one. So I think what I felt was the idea of starting to hurt these women, uh, the idea of trying to handle all these emotions on the same side of me questioning if I'm even the right guy for this role. Like all that boiled up that week and uh, I guess the best way to get it out is to talk to the camera about it. <laughs> and he did just that. And I did. Yeah. And you talk about the cameras. They're there during the good times, the bad times, the romantic times. And that's something your sister said she didn't want to see. What has your family said so far about your journey and having to watch you get into those kissing moments and things like that? I will say that they love watching the journey except for that. Um, <laughs> my older sister Carly has been honest with me. I've been l lucky to watch a lot of the episodes with her and she's like, I don't like watching this season. <laughs> it's a lot of kissing. I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah, a little different. A little more screen time with that. So, sorry Carly. <laughs> Gina? I love that. Joey, in watching it, or you said you've been watching it back with Carly and, you know, some of your family members. As you've been watching it back, is there a moment that has really shocked you so far that you've seen that you're like, OK, I had no idea that. Yeah, I think uh, a good reminder as always is what you see me on TV talking to the women about. That's all I see. So there is a lot. There's a lot more of the conversations with the women. There's a lot more of their individual interviews. Um, I wouldn't say there's anything that really shocked me. It's just I didn't realize the level of some of the drama that was going on. I didn't realize a, a, some of their true emotions with some things and where they're having issues. So I am watching it back with America, which is kind of crazy because I think on the contestant side, you do feel like you see a lot except for the dates you weren't on. Um, but there's still a lot you don't see as a lead. And I thought I saw it all, but definitely didn't. <laughs> 
Are you second guessing any of your decisions as as you're watching it back with the rest? No, of us? no. I think what I did a really good job on, not to toot my own horn, but I I really tried to focus on the connections as much as I could. Try to pay attention to everything in the background. Uh, you heard me say it. I'll keep saying it. I went with my gut, and I, I can't I can't be mad at myself for doing that. There's nothing that I regret doing. Uh, there's nothing that I can take back. I did my best through this. And as long as I can kind of stand on that, I, I know I can be happy with my decisions. So obviously you didn't want to maybe eliminate too many women before the rose ceremony, but did you feel a responsibility? And we saw this with Jess to, if someone's getting really, really emotionally invested and you just weren't feeling it to send them on their way? 100%. It was the fairest thing I could do to her and the fairest thing I could do to anyone in that case. Um, the rose ceremonies are there for a reason, but if someone is willing to do what she did, she deserves to get the honest truth, and that's the best that I could have done. To hear something like that, like to hear you say that you're falling for me, it makes me feel so good. The problem that I'm having is when you feel that, you should be able to picture it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why, I just haven't been able to get there. It feels to me like it, I, we've talked before, full disclosure, um, and, y you know, when, when you've been here in L.A. And it does feel like you had said that you were an emotional guy and that we were going to see a lot of tears. And I do feel like we have so far, but I'm a little nervous that we're going to see a lot more. Is that going to be the case? Yeah, spoiler alert. There's plenty <laughs> more tears. Um, yeah, I, I think that it's 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 the timing of it all. Right. Like. This got serious this week or this past week in, in Montreal because there was real emotions being expressed. And each week's going to get harder because there are genuine connections, people I have to say goodbye to, uh, people that I don't want to hurt that I'm, I'm going to inevitably have to. Uh, but again, I, I try my best to be honest. To, the best thing I can do is just explain and uh, yeah, be real and, and, and trust what my gut is. But yes, there, there will be tears. There's no doubt. There's more coming. <laughs> Along I those, feel like you might be the most um, one of the most emotional bachelors. Yeah, in my region. mom understands that too. So does my family. <laughs> I mean, obviously, there's going to be surprises along the way. But were you surprised, maybe not only how difficult this was, but maybe how much you learned about yourself during this process? Yeah, it's I, I, everyone that's been through this can explain that it is in its own way, its own therapy. Um, you, you get put in difficult situations. You can only in those situations go to what you know. And that makes you question almost everything you know sometimes. And it's it's healthy, but it's tough. And yeah, I learned a lot about myself through this process. And as everyone should, I'm learning more about myself every day. And this whole experience just kind of pulls it out in its own way. You and Jesse Palmer kind of developed a little bit of like a bromance I love during the season. <laughs> How helpful was he to you in this process? And he was a former bachelor. So, I mean, did he have advice to give you during the show? 100%. Um, we were in his hometown, too, in Montreal. So Jesse was feeling himself that week. Uh, <laughs> but he was he was great. He uh, We even got a chance off camera to go out to dinner, um, talk a little bit more. He got to show me around some of his favorite spots. I think what Jesse does such a good job at is, um, yeah, off camera, even on camera, just being that warm person for you, reminding you you're not in this alone, trying his best to reason, but also it, like he gets that it's different. He gets that every experience is different. He's just trying to give any advice he can. Um, but Jesse was someone that I leaned on towards the end a lot because he gets it. And it was, it was great to talk to him about those things. I have... Probably the most hard-hitting question you're going to get. And I know that means it's not hard-hitting, but let's do it. <laughs> All right. Did you take home the flamenco shoes? And does that mean that this is like a little prelude to maybe seeing you on Dancing with the Stars? Not all flamenco <laughs> shoes. Uh, I, I, I will not lie. I tried to find the flamenco shoes <laughs> because people love them that much. But no, I, I, I did not bring them home. Uh, no one needs to see me with those shoes and shorts ever again. Uh, but yeah, who knows what's going to come next? I don't know. Maybe I'd be open to dance on TV. <laughs> no one wants to see it, but I'd be open to it. <laughs> we need we to see it. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you want the shoes, maybe they'd come back on TV. Gina tried to get the dancing with the star scoop. Uh -huh. Gotta love it. Uh, one question I've always wondered about this show, uh, especially as a guy and it makes me nervous just thinking about it. You meet 32 women the first night you have to do a rose ceremony. How on earth do you remember everybody's name after the, you've just met these women hours beforehand 
and know who is who when you're doing the rose ceremony? It's tough. The first night's definitely the hardest part. Um, I am not prideful. In the beginning of every conversation, if I have any doubt of what her name is, I'm not guessing. I'm asking <laughs> questions. Uh, but I, I, I do have decent recall on names, especially when I meet someone and get to know them. I, I've had to do a lot with teaching tennis. So I don't have any trick other than I think that I've had to do it a lot in my life and I might have just grown that part of my brain a little bit more. But uh, yeah, it's I, the biggest thing I do in the beginning is not be prideful and ask them for their name as much as I can until it sticks. And you remember when you're handing out the rose, who's who? Heck yeah, I remember. Wow. I've heard, I mean, that's my boy Jesse one. made that mistake before. I can't <laughs> be that guy. That's That's a bad guy to be. <laughs> Jesse knows better than that. Oh my gosh. So if you had to pick a hardest week, mm -hmm. other than the finale, obviously, but did you have a moment where you're like, I, I just want to be done with this? Like, did you have that feeling? And did, if it did happen, when was, when was it? Yeah. I mean, I'll be completely honest. It's not like it's all smooth sailing from here, but Montreal was probably the toughest week um, in a lot of ways besides the ending. And it, it, it gets tougher throughout, but I think that week I just felt the weight the most. Um, I had to get some more confidence. And what I will always be grateful for is the woman gave that to me that week. And uh, that was huge. It just, it was, it was a tough week. I was questioning it. And uh, I never got to the point of walking away. I think it was more questioning if I could go through all this. And yeah, I mean, everyone felt it in Montreal. I was, I was as a sad boy that week. <laughs> it felt like, it felt very emotional that week. And it felt like, you all were kind of feeding on each other's emotions. Like they felt you sad, you felt them, or you know, they it all just felt like it was one kind of tornado of emotion. Yeah, it um, got real. Do you think like what was there something that just triggered that for you? Was it like something that you just thought? Was it just something that you said? What was it? Jet lag. No. <laughs> uh I'm not I'm not entirely sure what it was. I again I think I keep going back to the timing. Um it was just Spain was a great week for everyone. I think that the dates were all very, um, everyone enjoyed them. Uh, we got to the point that there was probably more of the women that have gotten a lot of time. And I think it was just the timing of a great week followed by, okay, hometowns are coming up. This is getting serious. I need to kind of see if there's something there. And I think emotions started to kind of boil to the surface, but maybe people were struggling to express them, like to give the right words. And I think there was just a lot of tension people were feeling because there were real emotions that were starting to come to the surface. So Montreal just had that like that beginning step of opening up and that made it very difficult. Uh, we know you got uh, your press for time and we know you can't give away uh, any trade secrets, uh, mm -hmm. if you will. But how about we do a little rapid fire of the six women that are left? You give us one word to describe each woman who is left Ooh. on the show after six episodes. You ready for this? Let's do it. Daisy. Kind. I think we can all agree with that. Jen. Spunky. Kelsey A. Beautiful. Kelsey T. Strong. Maria. I'll give three words. One of a kind. <laughs> four words. One of a kind. Yeah, four words. Uh, and Rachel. Fun. That's well, really great. Well done. <laughs> puts you on the spot and he nailed it. Well, listen, oh, it's very positive. Yeah, no <laughs> question. And it, it, it's been fun watching your journey. And it's we know this is all going to work out the way it's supposed to. And it's been fun kind of watching your uh, evolving, if you will, as a character in this show, as the star yeah, yeah. character. And we know this is all going to be a great ending. And we can't wait to have it here on Channel 7. And thanks so much for being with us, Joey. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Boy, what a way to start things off. Joey here and I think the thing that is just so evident in this season is how genuine of a guy he is and we saw that firsthand in this interview. The guy you see on the show is 100% the guy that showed up here today to talk to us like it, it is who he is he is unapologetically honest with the women I mean how can you not love him? Absolutely he has told me before that he's just a normal guy trying to find love in a very not normal situation. And I, I think especially today's conversation really showed that. And isn't that really what makes this entire season so great? Not only from his perspective, 
but the women as well, because I think one of the knocks on The Bachelor in previous seasons is, oh, a lot of these women are here just to become influencers and boost their social media profiles. But it seems like the women this season, especially as we're down, we were down to the final 10, now we're down to the final six, they all seem like they're here for the right reasons. And I think that adds uh, an authenticity factor here to this season. Even the ones that were stirring up drama... At the end of the day, I think they were there. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, that was something that was a little unusual. We didn't really have that, like, wrong reason person this season, I guess. And Gina, coming off The Golden Bachelor, which was about as authentic as it gets, this genuineness, if you will, we've seen in this season has really just kind of exemplified what this show should be about. Absolutely. And I'm going to take it a step further, too. I feel like Charity season and Zach season were also... On this more authentic, I'm really here to find love. You really felt that this is what they were there for. We saw the emotions kind of boil over in the group date in Montreal as women are getting more and more attached to him. And how about the women just kind of coming up and kissing him in the middle of the group date, really taking their opportunity to get to know Joe or take that relationship to the next level? They're getting bold. Yeah. I mean, as they should be. Yeah, but it's right in front of each other. (laughs) I don't know. What do you think, Gina? Well, I mean, note to Jess, this is what you do. She was so worried about not getting time with him. And this is how you do it. You you take your moments when you can. Mm-hmm. And Jen, I mean, she kept things really light. She made this disgusting poutine of, what was it, pineapple and chocolate. And it was gross. But he liked it nonetheless. You know, I mean, he liked that it kept things light. It made it fun. I think he needed that at this point. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, we're just becoming more and more attached to everybody, really. And I think we saw that with the whole Jess situation that he said, "Okay, I'm not at your level. You need to go. But I think the biggest surprise from that episode, I think we can all agree, is Lexi kind of not being on the same timeline as him and having the courage to walk away, which is not easy to do. Yeah, that came up. She had some time to think about it, went back to him later. I mean, it was a well thought out conversation. And I think he just... He wasn't willing to adjust his timeline at that point, and nor should he have to if that's not what he wants for his life, you know? As someone who has infertility, like, I have to take that really seriously as I date, knowing I'm in my 30s now, and that's just something that is going to have to happen probably at a little bit of a faster pace for me, and I think it'd be unfair to keep me here when, like, I am just on a different timeline. It also goes for Lexi as well. Like mm-hmm. she has she has limitations right now. And it's understandable that these are the things that she would be thinking about when you're on a dating show that could lead to you meeting your husband. You know, you have to be completely honest about what can or cannot happen. And, you know, I think kudos to her for A, being so open about it, B, being willing to talk about it in front of cameras, and then to see and see to walk away when she was sure that it wasn't going to work out in that way. Um, I know that it hurt. I'm sure that it hurt, you know, both of them. Um, Joey was really shocked. He said that. Um, But in the end, I mean, I think for her, it was probably the right thing to do. Probably for both of them. Yeah, and I think in anything else with life and with dating, it all comes down to timing, right? If you're on a different timeline than someone else, then it's just not going to work out. And I think they both agreed in that moment that was the right decision for both of them at this point in the show. Uh, Maria, I think, is all of a sudden, in my opinion, becoming the most likable one of the six. At least that's how I look at it. I like that, much like Joey, she's very genuine, very real. I love her personality. She's like, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to go after my man. And not that she's being rude to anybody else in the house now that that drama is kind of over with from early in the season, but I thought her one-on-one with Joey was probably my favorite one-on-one of the season. I'm today. Team Maria. I really, really like her. And if it doesn't work out with Joey, I would say, let's make this lady the Bachelorette. I, I agree. Love her. I How agree. much fun would she be? I think she would be a lot of fun. I think, Ryan, you're right. I feel like that one-on-one date was just so much fun to watch. And I really do feel like he needed it. He needed the moments of levity because this the whole episode had been so mm-hmm. heavy. To watch them be light and play and her tease him and then tease back, 
it was so much fun to watch. And I think it was definitely, I mean, it was definitely welcomed. And I think it was definitely needed on both sides. I think she needed it too, though, because she had that awful two-on-one date. She endured that. This girl deserved the date of the century, honestly. And she definitely had that a pretty woman moment, if you will, taking her shopping and picking out a dress and uh, going out for a nice uh, day in Montreal. All that was great. And it was so funny because we touched on this with Joey, and I want to touch on this really quickly. It just seemed like at the beginning of that episode, he was just over it. And you talked about him needing the levity. He just seemed exhausted. He seemed overwhelmed. He was just like, basically, it felt like, what did I sign myself up for here at this point in the season? I think every bachelor and even bachelorette gets to that point at some point and they have a little tipping point. But, you know, they rein it back in. They continue on and hopefully find love. But uh, we also had the other one on one date with Kelsey T. That was earlier. Mm -hmm. And I felt for Joey on that one. He felt nauseous from all the spinning around with the Cirque du Soleil people. (laughs) Oh, uh, how do you get through that? Uh, not easily. And he handled it better than I would. I could tell you that, Gina. He said it at one point. I think I need a Dramamine. And I've never <laughs> felt more like I was so in sync with him. I was just like, there's just no way I could never do it. The it's most perfect. relatable bachelor ever. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's exactly. pretty much what it felt like. Well, and Kelsey T, she had like a, a heavy moment during their one on one dinner that night where she talked about her family and revealed all of those details. And again, Joey handled it pretty flawlessly. Yeah, I, I think he's, you know, handled that about as well as good. And that was a, a very difficult and rather odd conversation to mm-hmm. have when you find out that basically religion has kept her from having a close relationship with her dad, which is obviously a real world thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just thought it was definitely uh, not what I was expecting her to say, that she had basically been kicked out of her dad's house uh, and wasn't allowed back in until she became a part of his religion. But listen, these are this is another situation of where this show is real life and it's real world issues. And it kind of brought that right to the surface again, Gina. Absolutely. You know, um, I mentioned I talked to Joey in the beginning of the season and he mentioned that we were going to be seeing and hearing from these women who had been through situations and life, you know, altering moments that we had not seen before. And what we're finding is that there are a lot of women who are going through real world thing and we're seeing that. And it really is true. I mean, with Kelsey and her situation with Lexi, um, with Daisy, um, everybody has, you know, there are some life experiences that people have had um, that we haven't seen before. And he has been handling it so well. He's so he's very understanding and very, um, you know, one of the one of the other women had uh, described him as, as an empath. And that is exactly how I see him. He really does care about people, their feelings. And, you know, you got to love that for him. That's what's going to make these rose ceremonies get even more and more difficult for him. And I feel for him like it's this especially this next one coming up. It's not going to be easy going from six to four. And, and anybody that has dated uh, for their adult life knows that it's always tough being the bad person. Right. When you have to be the one to break up with someone or break someone's heart, uh, especially someone that cares as much as Joey does, as we've obviously made evident uh, throughout this interview with him. Uh, and yeah, but at the same time, I think the six that are left are probably the six that I would picture him being left here with the, when you talk about the women that are left, right, Gina? Absolutely. I mean, I think that each one of them brings out something a little bit different in him. And I think it's, it's really interesting to see how different they all are from each other. And, you know, I think that's going to make it a lot more difficult for him to find the one that really, you know, he said before, it's not who is the right person. It's the, who's the right person for him. And so it's going to be interesting to see which out of these six is going to be the right person. So coming up, we've got more Canada headed our way this coming week. Looks amazing. And he talked about how beautiful it was there. Yes. So I, I, I'm really excited to see it. I know you're excited to see him hang out with Jen. I, uh, Jen's still my favorite. <laughs> Jen is still my favorite out of the six that are left, but he's going from six to four. Hometown's right around the corner. Uh, who do we think is going to be going home as we look at the roster here of who is left? I'm going to go, uh, I think, Rachel and Kelsey T. Say farewell. You think they're going to be the ones to go home? I think those two are saying goodbye before hometown dates. Gina, what are your thoughts on that? I'm feeling like I think Daisy and Jen are definite. 
to go to hometowns. Um, I feel like, to be honest, they might be my final two. I don't know. And yeah, that's a really good pick, DZ and Jen, for final two. But, oh, gosh. I mean, hmm. I think Kelsey T, even though he's got that great connection with her, I, I don't know. I don't know if I feel it long term. I think she could go, possibly. Uh, who else? What about Kelsey A? We haven't really talked about her lately. This episode. He likes What's her? He likes her a lot. I think yeah. he likes her a lot. Although he did say with Jen, he wanted to jump up and down when he when she said how much uh, she was into him and falling for him. And I think that was his most um, kind of outward reaction yet to somebody yeah. acknowledging their feelings. So you definitely know that he is a big fan of her. And when you asked him about Kelsey A... It- he didn't hesitate. He's like, beautiful. 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 That counts for something. There is. Girls. And there's a lot There's a lot of substance <laughs> behind that beauty as well. So we're kind of excited to Not see how this all plays out. Not trying to read into every word. <laughs> <I know. laughs> we're right. I mean, we're looking at facial expressions. <laughs> Did he pause before he answered? We have to take what we can get. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. He's, so we. He's keeping things, uh, you know, tightly <laughs> locked down because he doesn't want to ruin the finale for people. But, you know, we... we <laughs> we want to know. And here's a clip of what's coming up uh, in episode seven of The Bachelor. Am I there yet? No. I'm not going to tell him I'm in love with him just to get a rose. My biggest fear is someone I truthfully care about not choosing me. What the hell? Knowing that you are that way with these other women, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Am I just being an idiot and I'm falling and investing in these women that maybe don't see it with me? Do you know how scary it would be to get to that point of getting down on one knee and wondering if she was actually going to say yes or no? So, yeah, we're teed up. We're getting close to the finish line here. We were started, hard to believe we started with 32, a record number of women. We're already down to six. Two are going to go home, we think, uh, after this upcoming episode. And away we go. A lot to look forward to, guys. I can't wait to see it. I love Hometowns. Those are my favorite. That's my favorite episode every season because you really get to see what makes these women who they are. You know, their friends, their family. It's going to be great. Absolutely. It is. You're I'm with you on that, Jen. It is. Uh, it's the one the most fun to watch. And it's also it also helps you understand them a lot more. And um, I can't wait to see some of their families and uh, have them meet Joey. I think it's going to be fun. Away we go. Joey's journey to find love one step closer. Uh, that wraps up the inaugural edition of the Playing the Field podcast. So much fun talking about this show And I know we're going to have a lot of fun and a lot of surprises the rest of the way. For Gina and Jen, I'm Ryan. Thanks so much for being here, and we'll see you next time.